Hey guys, Dean here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be showing you the best things that you can do when visiting Amsterdam in the Netherlands. So if you're going on a trip and you're wondering what are the best tourist spots that I can visit, what are the best events that I can take part in, and what are the best points of interest in the city, then you'll find them all in this video. I visited last year and I had a really great time. I'm going to be showing you the best parks, the best museums, the best tourist spots and places to hang out with friends and all the places you need to go and explore during your trip to Amsterdam. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Royal Palace. The Royal Palace sits in the center of Amsterdam and it's a key spot for royal visits and receptions or ceremonies, but it's open to the public for visitation. The place is the largest and the most important structure from the 17th century, being one of the most important monuments of the Netherlands. Inside the Royal Palace itself, you'll enter the main hallway and see the side rooms sprouting off from it. There are apartments, royal quarters, and a lot of different rooms and places to see and enter, each with amazing large art pieces, such as the oil paintings, wooden arraignment in the rooms with different vibrant red carpets and chandeliers, and marble architecture. In here, you'll receive an interactive audio guide, which lets you assign it to the number displayed in each room, in order to play a narration, which will explain each room and their place in history, as well as their purpose and their contribution to the royal family, as well as their life and proceedings. Rijks Museum. This is the key museum that you have to visit in Amsterdam if you want to experience the rich culture of the city. So if you're into museums, stop by here. This National Museum of the Netherlands has its focus point upon Dutch arts and history, and it's located in the city's museum square. Originally founded in The Hague in 1798 and moved to Amsterdam in 1808, there's over 8,000 art and history objects on display from their more than 1 million objects and possessions, with masterpieces belonging belonging to or by legends such as Van Gogh and Rembrandt, who spent his years, his last years, in the city. With 19th, 20th and 21st century alterations and building to it, there's a lot to see and soak in here. Amsterdam Dungeons For anyone who has visited the York Dungeon or London Dungeon, you should be familiar with this place. It's owned by the same company and it follows a similar theme. This dungeon experience takes you through an interactive adventure with moving parts flashing lights and sound effects. It's led by actors who reenact periods in history to show you the old city of Amsterdam and their punishment to those who broke the law. If you're scared of the dark, you probably should avoid this one. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed it though, and although I think this would mainly be great for children, it still appealed to me as a young adult. The actors had me laughing a lot, and I really just enjoyed the experience. The interactive tour and performance lasts around 80 minutes or so, and it starts you off locked in the dark in a prison cell with the rest of the visitors of the tour, taking you in a group through the many different rooms deep down underground. And of course, it's definitely claustrophobic from the start to finish. But even though you're in a group of random people, there's kind of like a family feeling to the whole tour whilst you're going through, and there's a lot of laughs. I definitely recommend this one. This place will give you goosebumps. Now, unfortunately, due to the no picture policy, I'll mostly have to show you footage and photos that I found strictly online and on Google, as I couldn't actually take my own footage in here. Madame Tussauds. Madame Tussauds is always good fun to visit. I've been to the one in Vienna, Istanbul, and also Amsterdam. I'd recommend actually getting the combi tickets here though with the Amsterdam Dungeons, basically just so you can save some money and you can visit both places. I stopped by here and then I visited the Amsterdam Dungeons almost directly after finishing here. Although make sure you go early or time it based on their opening times as sometimes they'll also assign you a time slot to the dungeon on your ticket. There are wax sculptures of everyone here, from your favourite singers like Beyonce and Justin Bieber, or Zayn Malik of One Direction, to boxers and fighters from The Ring, and even Marvel superheroes like Loki and the Avengers like Thor. Now, as you probably expected, some of these wax sculptures are hyper-realistic and lifelike, especially the skin and eyes, but some are less than stellar and not so believable, as is usually the case. But it's a great place to take pictures with your friends, or selfies with so-called famous people, or their wax doppelgangers. Ripley's Believe It or Not. 
You may have heard of the popular books of this name, one that comes to mind when you think of Guinness World Records, they're quite similar. It's a similar book, but one that features the weird and wonderful, exactly what you get when you sign up to visit this museum. This place is fascinating, and if you like museums, this one should keep your interest, because all of the exhibits are entirely different and so random, and each item on display there all have an interesting backstory on where they were found and how they came to be in the collection. This is just one of the 20 29 museums from Ripley's all around the world. But the dense amount of interactive displays and elements are really cool and unusual. I really enjoyed seeing odd facts and cultural memorabilia from around the world. You'll see gigantic robots themed and based around Transformers, examples of the tallest and the fattest people to ever live. You'll go through a spaceship or even see a rotating bridge that will trick your brain and make you feel dizzy. And of course, you can go through a torture chamber with history of those who fell victim victim to evil rulers. My favourite is the horror showcase that shows aliens of Roswell, vampire hunting kits and flashing paintings that play mind tricks on you. Micropia. Micropia is a biology museum that sits on the artist grounds where you can also find the city zoo. Micropia is all about invisible life and it sets itself upon the theme of microbes, bacteria and microorganisms, as well as miniature insects that we can't see with the naked eye. This place is pretty magnificent and there are some really cool exhibits that you can see up close with the microscopes and magnifiers to see bacteria and small particles at higher magnifications to see how they move around and behave. Things you wouldn't usually see outside of a lab. There are also talented lab technicians and scientists working at the facility who do routine presentations if you're lucky enough like I was to listen to the talks. It's pretty ghastly though to see dust mites and bed bugs for an example under the microscopes but it really opens up your eyes to things which you don't usually or can't see. I wouldn't recommend touching the surfaces here though although efforts for sanitation are clearly important. Anything with bacteria I'd avoid direct contact with. The section on how bacteria affects food during stages of shelf life is also really interesting too. You can basically see food items going through different courses of perishing and what you can expect when they go mouldy and stale or bad. Artis Royal Zoo Artis is a collective site with multiple points of interest, a spot which I discovered first when visiting Micropia which is right next to it. This zoo is interesting as it's basically right in the city centre in the busy hub. Founded in 1838, the Royal Zoo is home to over 700 plus species of animals and 200 or more variants of trees. Now you can expect to see a lot of animals in the zoo and it also has an accompanying aquarium zone and off-site from the zoo on Artis there's the planetarium which showcases the birth and the evolution of the planet. This is actually a really good day out and you'll be surprised just how big the zoo itself is on the inside. There's plenty of places to walk and get around so I definitely recommend dedicating at least two or three hours when visiting if possible just so you don't have to rush. Vondel Park if you're visiting Amsterdam during the spring or the summer, Vondel Park is an amazing place you really need to visit. This place is, in my opinion, the best park in the city and it's absolutely huge. Anyone and everyone goes here and there's so many reasons why. If you want to relax during the daytime with your friends and sit down and enjoy the surrounding nature, or you just need a spot to sit down and read, this is the place. I went here during the day to eat and also talk to the family on my phone and I returned at night for a nighttime walk in the park. This is a perfect spot for biking also as the pathways are really long and they stretch in a winding fashion all around the park with multiple routes going different directions. By now, if you're visiting the park and you've been in Amsterdam shortly, you'll have noticed the popular presence of bikes, so renting one isn't a bad idea for reasons like visiting this place. There's children's playgrounds and nearby cafes and restaurants literally just across the street from its entrance. This is the city's largest park and also has an open air theatre with performances. This place originally opened in 1865 as a leisure spot for the middle class of the city, labelled as Newey Park. I'm probably buttering up that Dutch, meaning New Park, but was renamed to its current label in 1880 and donated as a public park to the city in 1953. Number 2 Body Worlds This speciality museum located in the heart of the city is one of the more quirky ones, but it's interesting nonetheless. This is a very strange museum with an interesting concept that's very unique. It basically visualises how people's lifestyle and their daily choices impact their body and their health and their happiness, something they show you by basically showing 
real human bodies which were donated to science that have been preserved using plaster and filling materials. It sounds worse than it looks. There's around 200 unique plastinated pieces in here which visualise the different organs and musculature of the body. I'd recommend this museum to anyone who has a vested interest in how human anatomy works and who can stomach a realistic visual representation showcasing that. I really like the elements showing how mental health and mood affects the body. There's a lot of really interesting parts to this exhibition that makes me recommend visiting it. The Jordan. This key neighbourhood of Amsterdam's Greenwich Village is well known for its narrow alleyways and accompanying canals with cafes, shops and vintage stores dotted up the side of it. This area of the city is home to the Nordermarkt, which is the flea and farmer's market, a great spot for organic produce, antiques and vintage clothing. There are also some quirky themed museums and art galleries too, but perhaps the most famous of the locations, which I haven't mentioned in its own feature in this guide, for the reasons that I have not personally been there, is the Anne Frank House. Now I visited the outside of the Anne Frank House, although one big mistake people make when visiting Amsterdam is not pre-booking a ticket. When I visited it, it was booked out for the whole first month, so you can't just go and drop in like every other museum. This is a place in demand, so make sure that you book online far in advance if you want to see the history and diary pages of Anne Frank during the Second World War period. If you want to see the many different restaurants of the neighbourhood, you'll be spoiled for choice and there's some chocolatiers and cafes too. This is a great spot for picturesque views of the canals, especially at night time where you'll get some great photos. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you have any questions about any of these places which I featured, then leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try my best out of experience to answer your questions and help you guys out. If you need any tips with planning your trip or if you have any questions about where the places are, do let me know because I do like to interact with everyone in the comment section down below. And let me know if there's any great places in Amsterdam which deserved a spot on this list which I didn't feature or if any information I got was a little bit inaccurate. If anything's changed, let me know your favourite spots in the city which you visited and why you love them so much. And if you're a local, let me know anything about the city which I didn't know about too. Don't forget to like the video if it was useful in any way and subscribe because I'm posting a lot of travel and business and money making videos on this channel which I'm sure you'll find interesting to watch. And I'll catch you soon.